Excel gives us different options to perform the same task and achieve the same goal. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to extract trackers from a list with two conditions. I could do it with different methods using nested functions, advanced filter, a VBA code, power query, or dynamic arrays. However, in this tutorial, I'll be using power query and dynamic arrays. You can watch my tutorials where I use the other methods by clicking on the link in the description below the video. Now let's see how we do that in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet I have a list which shows a date, a region, a manager, a customer, cost of goods sold and sales. And in column I and J I do have a drop list from which I can select different conditions, so I can select a specific region and I can select a specific manager. What I would like to do is to extract the records where the two conditions are met, so I'm extracting records based on multiple criteria. And to do this, for this example, I'll be using Power Query. To send these lists to Power Query, I need to convert them to tables. So I'm going to convert the first one into a table by selecting any single cell and to convert it to a table, although we have different paths, I'll be using the simplest technique. I hit the shortcut Control T and then I hit Enter and I would have converted it into a table and up at the top I can see the table design. So if I go to the left side of the table design tab, I can name my table. I'm going to name it Source T and then I hit Enter. I want to do the same exact thing for the second list, so I select any single cell, and then I hit Control T, I hit Enter, and now I want to name my second table, I'm going to name it Criteria T. Now I'm ready to send these tables to Power Query, and that's very easy. I select the first one, and then I go to the Data tab of the ribbon, and to the left side of the Data tab I select From Table or Range. My query editor opens on top of Excel. I can see to the right side the query settings. I can see the properties, the name of the query that I just assigned in Excel, source T, and I can see the applied steps. It looks like some data type changes has been applied automatically. Although I'm not very happy with these changes, I'm going to revert them in the last step. So for now on, what I need to do is to save the result of this query as a connection only. And to do this, I click on the left side of the Home tab, Close and Load, I click on the down arrow, select Close and Load 2, and I just want to save it as a connection, so I check the radio button for Only Create a Connection, and then I hit OK, and the query has been saved. To the right side now I see Queries and Connections, and here it says Connection Only. I want to do the same exact thing for the second table, so I select any single cell in the table, I can go to the Data tab and click on From Table, or I can use the shortcut Alt-A-P-T. The Query Editor opens. Same exact thing, I want to save it as a connection. To the left side of the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Close and Load, Close and Load 2, and I want only to create a connection, so I select the option Only Create Connection and then hit OK. I have two queries in the Queries and Connections pane. Now I want to create my query that will extract the records and this query is a kind of merge query. It will be merging the two previous queries based upon the conditions in the second one. So let's see how we do that. I click on the down arrow of Get Data and this time I want to create a combined query. From the submenu I select a merge query. And the Merge dialog box opens. I want to merge the first table, which is the source T, and I want to merge it with the second one, which is criteria T. I see the fields from the two queries, and I want to find out the matching fields. So region from the source T query matches region. Now in order to select another one, 
and keep my previous selection, now I have to press Ctrl while clicking on Manager, and look what happens in the headers. Now I see little numbers here, 1 and 2, and while still pressing the Ctrl key, I click on Manager. Now Region corresponds to Region, 1 and 1. Manager corresponds to Manager, 2 and 2. What would you like to extract? What's the join kind? Well, I just want to see the matching records on either side, so I click on the down arrow under Join Kind, and from here I'll be selecting Inner Join, only matching rows. Now I'm ready to merge, I hit OK. And here in my merged query, these are the records where the two conditions are met. What I would like to do is to name this query, so under name I'm going to name it Extracted Records, and I hit Enter. And usually when I create a merge query, that means I need fields from the second table. But in our case, I don't need any fields from the second table because the two fields are already there, the region and manager. So what I need to do is to get rid of this extra field or this extra column. So I right click and remove. I need to look at the data type. So I click on the little icon for the data type for date and I'll be changing it to date. For the region, manager, and customer, I see ABC, which means text, and that's fine. For the cost of goods sold, I select this column, I press Shift and click on Sales, and for these two, I want to change the type, so from the right-click menu, I select Currency. Now I'm ready to send back the result of this query to Excel, so to the left side of the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Close and Load, and I select Close and Load 2. I want to load it to the existing worksheet, so I select Existing Worksheet, and I specify the destination, cell L1, and now when I hit OK, it will load the extracted records. I can close the queries and connections to look at the result of my query, and here is the result of my query. I want to test how dynamic it is, so when I change my conditions, let's say instead of South, I'll be selecting West. And let's say for the manager, I'll be changing the manager and select my name, Nabil. Now I want to refresh this query. I could go to the data tab of the ribbon and click on refresh. Alternatively, with one single cell selected in the result of the query, I hit Alt F5 and that refreshes the query. The result is dynamic and the query updates. I can also extract the records by using the new calculation engine of Excel, the dynamic array functions. And I have the same exact list in the next worksheet, where I see the date, the region, the manager, the customer, the cost of goods sold and sales. I have the same drop list for the region and manager, and I want to extract the records by using a simple dynamic array function. I want to filter my list based upon these conditions. I want to filter my list and include these two conditions. So in cell L2, I'm going to create my function. I'm using for this exercise Office 365 with Office Insider, so the dynamic array calculations are available to me. And although there are lots of advantages in the dynamic array functions, but to me, the greatest advantage is that I can create the formula once and it spills to the adjacent cells. I don't have to worry about copying by dragging or copying by any other technique. Not only this, but I don't have to worry about locking and unlocking and the F4 key. Let me show you what I mean. I'm selecting cell L2 and I'll be typing equal filter. That's the name of the function I'll be using. When I hit tab, I see the arguments. Where is the list you want to filter? Where is the array you want to filter? Well, I would like to filter all this list. So I start by selecting row number two, and then I want to extend my selection. So I hit shift control down arrow. Usually at this point, I hit the F4 key to lock the range and jump back to the top. But because I want to show you that the function will work just fine without having to lock anything, so I'm going to use a different shortcut, Control Backspace. When I hit Control Backspace, I jump back to the top without having to lock the range from B2 to G351. I hit Comma, and now the second argument is, what would you like to include? 
where I have two conditions. And because I have two conditions, I have to multiply condition 1 by condition 2. So let me show you how to do this. I open bracket, and then I want to select the range for the region. In this entire column of region, starting from C2 down to the end, shift control down arrow, I don't want to lock anything, so I use the same shortcut control backspace one more time. So the range is not locked, and I'm asking the question, is any of these cells equal to whatever condition comes from I2? And I close the bracket. And because I have a second condition, I multiply. That's the equivalent of the AND operator. I open bracket, and I need to provide the second condition in the same exact way. I want to select the entire column for manager. I select the first one. I want to extend the range by hitting shift control down arrow. I want to jump back to the top without locking, control backspace, and I'm asking is any one of these managers equal to the condition coming from cell J2? I'm not locking anything. I close the bracket. I could provide the third argument, but the third argument, if empty, is an optional argument, so I'm going to omit it. And I close the bracket for the filter function. Before I hit enter and I show you the magic of this function, we have two conditions. The first condition is comparing whatever we have in column C to the condition in the region coming from the drop list, and it will return a bunch of trues and false. And the second condition, same exact thing, is comparing the entire column for the manager to whatever I have in the drop list for the manager, and it will return a bunch of trues and false. Whenever a true meets a true, a true multiplied by a true returns a true, and that will include it in the result of the filter. Anything else will be excluded from the filter. All what I need to do, there is no control shift enter as we used to do in the classic array formulas. Now all what I need to do is to hit enter and this single function will spill to the adjacent cells. Here is the result of my filter function. I want to test by changing conditions. Instead of west, I want south. And instead of Cheryl, I need to select Melissa. Everything is working fine and everything is dynamic. I showed you two methods, the Power Query method and the Dynamic Array method. There are different methods for extracting records conditionally in Excel. And if you enjoyed this training video, there are also different ways to show your support to my channel. You can like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.